You are the nominee of President Donald John Trump. This is a president who's shown us consistently that he is contemptuous of the rule of law. He has said and done things as president which we've never seen before in our history. He has dismissed the head of the Federal Bureau of Investigation when he wouldn't bend to his will. He harasses and threatens his own attorney general on almost a daily basis in the exercise of his office. And I didn't vote for Jeff Sessions. But I have to tell you, there should be some respect, at least for the office that he serves in. And it's that president who's decided you are his man. You're the person he wants on the Supreme Court. You are his personal choice. So are people nervous about this? Are they concerned about it? Of course they are. I'm sure there'll be a shower of tweets sometime later in the day, harassing people in the cabinet, people in the White House, maybe even dismissing them. And maybe he'll go after me again, be my guest. But the point I'm getting to is if you wonder why this reaction is taking place, it's because of what's happening in this country. There are many of us who are concerned about the future of this country and the future of democracy. And you are asking for a lifetime appointment to the highest court in the land where you will make decisions, the deciding vote on things that will decide the course of history and where we are headed. The Senate has a constitutional responsibility to evaluate your nomination. We do know that before you became a judge, you were faithfully advancing the Republican Party agenda. I jokingly said in one of your previous appearances that you're like the Forrest Gump of Republican politics. You always show up in the picture. Whether it's the Ken Starr investigation, Bush versus Gore, the Bush White House, you've been there. We also know that before naming you, President Trump made it clear that he would appoint justices, only appoint justices, to the Supreme Court who would overturn Roe versus Wade and the Affordable Care Act. Those were his litmus tests. Now, he didn't ask you the question. What he did was to delegate this responsibility to two special interest groups, the Federalist Society and the Heritage Foundation, and the other groups that are spending millions of dollars in support of your candidacy. They're confident that you're going to favor the interests of corporations over workers and give the president wide berth when it comes to executive authority. And your own law clerks, men and women you chose, men and women who wrote the words that had your signature at the bottom of the page, have told us what they think of you. One wrote in an article entitled, quote, Brett Kavanaugh said Obamacare was unprecedented and unlawful. That's from one of your clerks. Another wrote, when it comes to, quote, enforcing restrictions on abortion, no court of appeals judge in the nation has a stronger, more consistent record than Judge Brett Kavanaugh. Big corporate interests solidly behind your nomination. Chamber of Commerce, full support. And President Trump, whose lawyers say they will fight any effort to subpoena or indict him all the way to the Supreme Court, that president seems personally eager to have you confirmed as quickly as possible. Why are your supporters so confident you'll rule on these issues as they wish? Why do they think you're such a sure bet to take their side when, in the words of one of your former clerks, this is no time for a gamble? Unfortunately, I don't think you're going to tell us much this week. It's interesting to me that people in your position write all these law review articles, make all these speeches, and come to this room and clam up. Don't want to talk about any issues, but that's what I expect. Instead, we'll be asked to trust that if you're confirmed, you'll have an open mind, that you'll follow the law rather than move the law in your direction of your views. I'd like to trust you, but I agree with President Ronald Reagan. Trust, but verify.